The following is a demo of the CA Service Operations Insight Proof of Concept integration with the ServiceNow Incident Ticketing System. This video explains what basic features are provided in the Proof of Concept integration and how to configure the integration for your own environment. The following diagram demonstrates both the components making up the integration as well as the communication flow between the two systems. On the bottom left portion of the diagram, we break out the components within your hosted ServiceNow instance. In the top right area, we outline the systems within your network, including a ServiceNow mid-server agent that is required for this integration. This integration is designed to be a bi-directional integration between ServiceNow and SOI. It uses standard CA Java JAR files that speak to SOI via web services from a mid-server. When an alert is created, modified, or cleared in CA's SOI, we want to have a ServiceNow ticket created, updated, or closed respectively. In order to receive notifications from SOI on these alert creations or updates, ServiceNow must send a notification subscription request to SOI on a periodic basis stating that the instance would like to receive SOAP message posts on alert creation, update, and deletion. Now that we have subscribed to events, as alerts occur or they're modified or they are cleared in the SOI system, SOI is going to send a SOAP message to an inbound SOI notification processor that exists in the integration. This processor will take that information and run it through our transform map that will transform that data and apply it to the appropriate record in the incident table or create a new incident if necessary. In the case where an incident record is created due to an SOI alarm, a business rule on the incident table will execute a script. This script will take the ServiceNow incident ticket number and send a Java call to SOI to modify the alert by setting the incident number as the service desk ticket ID on the alarm. If the incident is closed within ServiceNow, a similar business rule will execute a script that sends a delete message through the Java API to the SOI server through the mid server and connector to tell SOI that the corresponding incident has been closed and therefore it can clear the alarm. When you install the integration, a new application will appear in your uh, ServiceNow instance. Just simply type in SOI in the filter pane of the navigation uh, frame and you'll see this uh, application integration, CA SOI application. Now, to begin to configure the integration to work in your environment, the first step is to click on the settings module. Here in the settings module, you'll notice quite a few properties. The first property is very important. It will be the web service endpoint on the CA side. This will include your server name. Typically, the port is 7090, but it is configurable. And then SAM web service will probably be standard. You probably don't need to modify that. Next, we have the username and password in the CA system so that when we make our integration calls, we can authenticate into the system. So place your username and password here. In case your system has a lot of network traffic and your CA endpoints fail often, you can set how many retries you will do on HTTP requests uh, out to SOI. So if uh, we make a request to close a, uh, an alert and it fails because the operation timed out, we will retry uh, for the maximum number of times that you specify here. The next setting is the CASY alarm resource URL. This is pretty standard and I don't foresee this changing. You can leave this as default. The inbound processor URL is important. Uh, this is the processor that will take the external SOAP calls from SOI and either create incident tickets or modify those tickets or clear them in ServiceNow. Typically, all you'll need to do is put, place your instance URL here and then leave the rest of the URL intact 
and uh, it should work just fine for you. The next, the next uh, property is the alert maturity. Uh, this option allows you to specify how many minutes you want an alert to exist before you decide to create an incident in the system. The reason we have this is because some alerts will take care of themselves uh, through automated mechanisms within a few minutes. And you don't want to necessarily create incidents for those alerts just to have them clear uh, 20 seconds, 40 seconds later. So you can declare it the number of minutes you want an alert to exist before the incident ticket is created. Now if you set this to zero, um, any alert will generate an incident right off the bat. The next property is the mid server that will be brokering these communications between ServiceNow and SOI. Uh, just place the name of the mid server uh, in this property. The last two properties uh, deal with debugging. Especially as you're setting up this integration, it will be helpful to have extra logging available to you. So you can turn this on or off. The mid server will also provide some logs as well, and you can tell it to either return those logs uh, in the ECC queue records that uh, are generated or to leave those logs out and just keep them in the mid server. Uh, when you're ready to go live with this or to use this uh, without troubleshooting, please make sure that you turn both of these settings to off. Now the other area of the integration that will need to be configured when you first install it is this scheduled job module. Uh, we'll go to that scheduled job and a list scheduled jobs that are going to run. There's a couple of inactive ones, just ignore those for now. Um, the, the two that we're interested in is this first one is, is release new alerts from queue. If you are using that alert maturity uh, feature saying that an alert has to exist X number of minutes before it creates an incident, uh, this scheduled job will check by default every 30 seconds uh, for to, to check the lifespan of the existing alerts to see if it should create incidents. Uh, you can tweak this schedule uh, if you need to. I, I doubt you really need to touch uh, this uh, scheduled job too much in your configuration. The one that really matters is a subscribe to notifications. Now, as we mentioned before, every so often we have to send a SOAP request out or a, or a Java uh, call out to SOI to subscribe to the events that happen inside of SOI. Uh, depending on your system, uh, that, that subscription will expire after a certain number of minutes or a certain length of time. So you, uh, in the system by default, uh, we put nine minutes. So every nine minutes we're going to resubscribe uh, to those alerts. Depending on how often or, or what the duration is of the subscriptions in your system, you'll want to set this to subscribe just before the prior subscription will end. So if your default is set to um, have subscriptions last 15 minutes, we recommend that you run this script every 14 minutes. So you would change this to 14 rather than nine. Now, if we need to tweak the transformation of the incoming data, you can go to the transform maps module and from there you can check on the field mapping as well as check on uh, the transformation that's going on there. Uh, let's go into some of the actual incidents that have been created by this integration. You can come here to the SOI based incidents and if we'll go into there, these are the incidents that have been created uh, due to alerts in the system in, in SOI. So I can click on here and look at the incident uh, this incident was created due to a high load and the integration does its best to try to determine what configuration item uh, this, this alert happened upon. It all depends on the data that SOI provides us. Uh, it tries to assign a configuration item. If that configuration item doesn't exist, this integration, this POC integration is designed to create that configuration item for us. Now, another thing the integration will try to do is based on the information given in the alert, uh, it'll try to assign the appropriate assignment group uh, to this incident as well. Again, all of this can be changed in the transform map uh, to fit your specific needs. But as we can see down here, uh, the POC integration will also, just for your information, uh, show 
all the data that it's receiving from SOI. So if you want to um, modify the transform map to uh, react a different way, you, you, you're able to see what the raw data is that comes from SOI in this case. Now notice we mentioned that when a ticket is created due to SOI, that um, a business rule is set to turn around and provide our ticket number uh, to SOI so it can correspond our ticket with the alert. And this message here uh, tells us that the, that uh, call was made out to SOI, so this number should be associated to the alert. And then down below here, uh, we show the correlation ID. This is the actual alert ID as it is set in the SOI tool itself. Now the next part of this integration is if I come into this incident and I go and I close this incident and I give it a close code, this is fixed and hit update, then the integration will send out a call to SOI to let it know that the, that the incident has been fixed or, or closed and SOI will go out and clear that alarm from its system. Conversely, if an alert is cleared within SOI first, then the integration will automatically close the corresponding incident in the system. The integration application contains all of its libraries accessible to the customer so that they can be modified to fit their needs directly. Also, we have a diagnostic section within the application that allows troubleshooting to occur uh, for the integration. For example, this message queue shows the input and output records going back and forth from the mid server to the SOI connector. This new SOI alert queue is the holding pin for those alerts that have come in but have not yet matured uh, long enough to become incidents. This link shows the incidents that have been created through the integration. And this link here shows the raw data that, have co that has come in through a SOI into the system before it was transformed. And this final link is the log file that we're receiving all the log entries that have been generated by the integration. Thank you for watching this demo video on the SOI integration with ServiceNow. If you have any more questions, there is a wiki documentation with the integration on wiki.servicenow.com and do a search for SOI and you should receive uh, the link to the documentation. Thanks once again.